Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I would like to guide you through an income statement. For this video, I planned the following. I would like to guide you through all major items of a typical income statement. Major items means that they are typically there in nearly each and every company and that they are typically large in terms of the amount. And I would like to show you the structure and the economic processes behind those items. Let us have a first view on a typical income statement. Here we see a typical income statement of a large company. First of all, we see there is written income statement, of course, but this is for 2019, which means it is for the full year 2019 and not only to a certain point of time. It is um, for the whole financial year. And we see that this income statement is in million dollars, which indicates that this is really a huge company since it has $8.6 billion of net operating revenue. What we need to know about the income statement before we read in depth is how it is combined with, with the balance sheet. The income statement is a sub-account of the equity. In accounting terms, the income statement is called profit and loss account or simply PL. So normally we would see the income statement somewhere here in the equity but currently we don't see it. Why don't we see it? The reason is pretty simple. At the year's end, the shareholders meeting has to decide about what to do with a profit or a loss. A profit might be distributed as a dividend. So we see this green spot here. So if we have a profit, and we would have an account like the PL account in here. We would reduce the PL down to zero and we would distribute this money um, to our shareholders so that the cash balance would go down. So, distributing the net income as a dividend to our shareholders will definitely reduce the cash and of course the profit and loss account that would have been shown here uh, would be emptied. The second option is that we can retain the, the profit as retained earnings. And we see here that here is an item reinvested earnings. So we just switch the net income into this account. The PL account is again emptied. And the last option here is in case that we have a loss. A loss must be deducted from the equity because no shareholder will pay in any money to cover those losses. So, Losses definitely have to be deducted from the equity. Whatever happens, we have three options here. By the way, it can also be mixed. The, the two possibilities for profit, like distributing dividends and retain earnings can be mixed. Half of the income can be distributed and half could be reinvested and so on and so forth. But of course, if you have a loss, it must be deducted from the equity. So whatever decision is made here, um, the, the P&L account is empty 
at the year's end, and that's why we don't see the PL anywhere here. Let us have a little overview over the layers of the income statement. These are the layers of a typical income statement. The first layer we have here is the attributable or item by item layer. This is number one. In this layer, we see the net operating revenues or simply sales. And deducted from those sales, we see the cost of goods sold. In between all those layers, we see in between results. So revenues minus cost of goods sold is the gross profit. This is our first in between result. After this result, we see the non attributable layer. Here, further cost items or further expense items are deducted, like selling and general administrative expenses and R&D expenses. Then, the next in-between result is the operating income or EBIT. EBIT stands for earnings before interest and tax. So, why is it called earnings before interest and tax? Because next comes the financial layer, and the financial layer is mainly made of interest expenses. And the last layer here, number four, is the tax layer. And that's why it's called earnings before interest and tax. Between the financial layer or finance layer and the income taxes or the tax layer, we see another in-between result. That is income before income taxes. And the bottom line of the, of the income statement is the net income or, in, if it is a large group, consolidated net income. Let us go through those layers. The first layer is the attributable or item by item layer. Why is it attributable and why is it item by item? If we stick with the example of Volkswagen, Volkswagen will sell cars. So here we see pictures of very old Beetle cars. And if Volkswagen sells one Beetle car, they will show additional revenue for one Beetle car. But at the same time, if they sell this additional Beetle, they will also the deduct the cost of this Beetle in the cost of goods sold. So, the revenue, of course, for this beetle is the price. If Volkswagen sells this particular beetle for 20,000 euro, for the additional beetle, they will earn some additional 20,000 euro. Or dollar, or whatsoever. And the cost of goods sold here for this beetle are the cost whatever it has cost to produce this beetle. Let's say it could be 50,000. Here it must be a minus, of course. Well, but what is the cost that can be shown here under cost of goods sold? It can be only those costs that are directly attributable to this beetle car. So, all the material 
like the steel or aluminium, the, the seats, driving wheels, wheels, and so on and so forth. So all the material costs are directly attributable, attributable because we know where we have put in those raw materials. The cost of this worker, since he is only produ producing the beetles, is directly attributable to those cars. His salary can be simply divided by the number of cars he produced. The same is true for the cost for the whole machinery that we see here, since this machinery is specialized in producing Volkswagen Beetle, it can be directly attributed to those individual cars. In the second layer, we see the non-attributable cost, like selling general and administrative expenses, SGNA, or research and development. So what is that? Selling cost are the cost of marketing. Marketing cannot be easily attributed to single products. Typically, you do marketing uh, for your brand, but not for an individual product. So it is not easy to attribute that to single products. General and administrative, we see the board of directors that has to be paid. We see all the office workers like in a human resource department or the controlling department and so on and so forth. So that's general and administrative expenses. And research and development. Research and development, of course, cannot be directly attributed to those products that are currently sold because they have already been developed. Research and development um, develops future products, but they are not yet sold. Accordingly, research and development cost or expenses cannot be directly attributed. After the non-attributable layer, we again arrive at the EBIT or the operating income. That means that this is our core business that ends here. Everything that comes below has nothing to do with our core business, but with the financing and with the taxation. The finance layer is mainly made of interest expenses for the debt that we have lended at a bank or at the capital market. Sometimes companies also invest money into interest simply to put aside some money for later, so they will earn some interest income. If companies like this one have in invested in other companies, they will also earn some dividends, so they will have some equity income that is shown here. And here we have some other financial income or loss. In this case, it's a loss. After the finance layer, we arrive at the income before income taxes result. And the income before income taxes result is important for the next layer, the tax layer. Because the income before income taxes is the tax base or the taxable amount. for the corporate income tax. So, if we think of this income before income taxes as 100%, and we assume a tax rate of 25% corporate income tax, then 
The net income is 75%. That might be distributed to the shareholders. I hope you liked this video. Thank you for listening and see you in the next video.